We're gonna hop on set really quick as well as in my editing program to show you exactly how to audio sync the real time footage to the mastered version of the audio in post production. All right guys, so song playback. I get this question a lot and I'm gonna teach you guys how to properly sync the audio that you're capturing on set with the mastered audio clip or file that you have in your editing program. So when you're on set, um, I always make sure to save the song to my phone. Um, reason being is maybe you're in a location that has really bad cell service and you can't connect to SoundCloud or your Gmail account or your, um, your email or Spotify or whatever to run the song playback. So I always download it to my phone so I have easy access to it and don't have to rely on Wi-Fi or internet to get access to that song. So next up what you're going to want is a Bluetooth speaker. This is probably arguably one of the most important pieces of shooting um, budget music videos or just music videos in general. Um, people use wireless or Bluetooth speakers for you know, shoots that are free to $100, upwards of $100,000 budget music videos. You need to have audio playing for performance scenes on music video sets, no matter what the budget is, if you're a beginner or a pro. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is play the mastered audio off of your cell phone and connect it to a Bluetooth speaker and basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is tell the artist to sing the song out loud. This just ensures that they have good lip sync throughout the entire performance scene. Another question I get is, do you play the song from beginning to end? I suggest doing that more so just so you have more footage to play around with in post because if you cut the song halfway through every single time or you're only playing portions of the song, what ends up happening if the artist comes back and says, hey, I actually want um, that first location in the three quarter way of the song in the edit and you actually stopped recording at that part. So that's why I always just try to record as much footage as I can, record the entire performance scene. And um, next up, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually sync the mastered audio with the clips that you capture on set. All right guys, so now that we understand the importance of a Bluetooth speaker on set, we are now in my editing program and I'm gonna show you guys how to actually sync the audio track that is sent to us from the artist. As you can see here, right here we see Madonna by Miles High. The audio track is imported into my editing software, Final Cut Pro 10. And then I just picked three performance scenes that we shot, which was actually off of an iPhone. And we're gonna use these three clips as an example. Now there was about 12 performance scenes, but I just picked three just for the ease of this tutorial and it's still gonna get the point across. So there's actually two ways to approach syncing the audio file here that was sent to us from the artist. So this is the mastered audio to the actual clips that we filmed, okay? So again, as you guys saw on set, I used a Bluetooth speaker to blast the song and I played the song from very beginning to very end for each of these performance scenes. As you can see, each performance scene clip here is about the exact same length as each other, sitting at about, you know, the one minute and 45 second mark because we were playing the entire song from beginning to end, okay? So I'm gonna pull this first clip down here, okay? Now I am showing you this in Final Cut Pro 10, but just know whether you use Final Cut Pro 10, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas, any other editing platform that is similar to those three or four that I mentioned where it's more of a drag and drop timeline, this is kind of how things are gonna look and how things are gonna work when it goes to audio syncing, okay? So I'm gonna drag this first performance scene just straight up in my timeline. This is the first kind of way of doing it, okay? Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. I've been using Epidemic Sound for six years, whether it's for paid client video work or my YouTube content. My favorite feature Epidemic has to offer is their AI video upload song matching tool. Simply upload test footage of a project you're working on to Epidemic Sound and their AI platform will spit out a long list of songs that match the vibe and pace of your video, saving you hours of finding royalty-free music that fits the vibe of your visuals. Not only do you get a library of thousands of royalty-free music, but you also get access to thousands of realistic sound effects. Click the link below to get a free 30-day trial to Epidemic Sound that can be canceled at any time. No commitment necessary. Now let's get back to the video. So we're gonna zoom in here, all right? Now I want you guys to pay attention to the waveforms. So basically the audio here, you can see there's a bunch of little waveforms all over the place and we're gonna kind of um, read these out, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Now I can see that the waveform starts to spike at about this mark right here. Okay, so that's probably where the beat of the song drops. We're gonna play back and listen for it. 
See, I was right. And now because I was using a Bluetooth speaker and blasting the song at 100% volume, it is very easy for us to pick apart the beat drops, okay? And this is gonna make for way easier audio syncing. So I'm gonna now go into the, um, the mastered audio and I'm gonna pull it underneath. So now we see this is where the drop is, okay? So I'm gonna click M on my keyboard and make a little marker. So this marker that I just made on this performance scene clip is where the beat drops. Now I can tell very easily by just looking at this audio clip that you can see that the audio levels start to peak right here. You can see all the yellow little um, peaks on this audio line. So obviously it's all calm, it's all calm, then boom, the audio peaks. It's gotta be the drop of the song. So we're gonna click another marker and we're gonna drag this back, drag this over and look at that. Because I have the two markers, it just automatically syncs together. Now again, this is in Final Cut Pro 10, could be a little different in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Sony Vegas, but for the most part, this is very, very similar workflow in all of these editing platforms. So sometimes when you do make a marker, it's not perfect. So what I like to do is zoom in on my timeline like by a thousand percent. And now I'm gonna start playing the song back from literally this point, from maybe like a second before. And when the audio is off, it's gonna sound like this. So it just sounds like super off, like we're about half a second um, off on in terms of the beat. So we're gonna go back here, we're gonna sync these up here. This appears to be pretty close, we're gonna play it back. We're gonna pull it back ever so slightly again, about here. So that looks pretty good to me. So at this point in time, our mastered audio is synced to this first clip. Now this is the manual way of doing it. There is an easier way that you can do this in DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, as well as in Sony Vegas. But if I were to, let's say, drag the next clip over, I would literally do the exact same thing just with the next performance scene. I would literally just trim this up, move this here, beat of the song, boom. And then I would have these two clips synced up together, okay? So this is the longer way of doing it. In my opinion, this is the more difficult way of doing it. I'm gonna show you option number two. This is in Final Cut Pro 10, but again, this can be done in DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas, and many other editing platforms. It is called a multicam clip, okay? So we're gonna delete this here, and I'm gonna go into my keyword collection, and I'm gonna type in performance scenes, okay? So in the performance scenes keyword collection, I literally just, a keyword collection is just another tab or folder. I'm gonna click on my song, pull it into performance scenes. I'm gonna click all of my performance scenes and drag it into the performance scenes keyword collection or folder. So when I click on performance scenes folder, all of my performance scenes are in this tab. So you're gonna drag all of your performance scenes when the artist is singing along to the song into the performance scenes tab that you created. And then you're also going to place the mastered audio inside of here as well. So now I'm gonna click this little button up here. And this just gives us a different view of all the clips within this folder. So obviously we see the mastered audio and then we see our three performance scene clips, okay? So I'm gonna click on all these. I'm gonna highlight all of them, right click, new multicam clip, and I'm gonna name this Madonna Multicam, keep my settings like so, click OK. And what this is doing is Final Cut Pro 10 is creating a multicam clip. It is synchronizing every single clip together, okay? So I just dragged my multicam, it finished. Sometimes it can take a while to create, depending on how many performance scenes you have, because we only had three in here just for, you know, the ease of this tutorial lesson. It was very quick, but what I did was I just dragged the multicam into the timeline and check this out. It looks like it's just one clip, right? Now when I double click the multicam, we are now inside of the multicam. And look at this. Remember when we were talking about the waveforms? Check this out. The waveforms where it's spiking, you see a spike here, right here, here, and here. Now when we line that spike up in the audio, it is all perfectly in sync. So Final Cut Pro 10 did all of the dirty work for us. It synced the mastered audio with all of the performance scenes. And again, this is why it is important and why I stress so much that you should have a loud Bluetooth speaker on set and keep it near your phone when you're filming. 
because this will ease the pressure in Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, whatever editing software you have when creating a multicam clip. The multicam clip will turn out perfect every single time if your um, your speaker, your wireless speaker is nearby the camera because then your camera audio is picking up the Bluetooth speaker so clearly. So when you make a multicam clip, the multicam clip is just turns out perfect every single time, which in turn creates a faster workflow for you in post-production. So we're gonna back out of this multicam clip and there's one last thing that we need to do is click on our mastered audio and drag it underneath, just like we did in the first option of audio syncing. So I placed it underneath, you're gonna zoom in again, just like we did in the, um, in the first option, and I'm gonna wait for that to load. And as you can see, these are slightly off. So I'm gonna zoom in further, and I'm gonna pull this over, and I'm gonna perfectly match these up together. I'm gonna play it back just to be sure. I know this is gonna sound perfect, but we're gonna play it back always just to be sure. So last step of this is just muting the multicam clip. So now the entire multicam clip is muted and now we have a perfectly synced multicam clip. Now you might be wondering, what's the point of a multicam clip? What does it even do? Well, check this out. On my keyboard, I'm gonna be clicking one through three, number one, two, and three on my keyboard. So I'm gonna click one. So right now it is actually showing the mastered audio, which is obviously just a black screen. Let's click two on the keyboard. This is the first performance scene in the multicam. Now I'm gonna click three. This is the second performance scene in the multicam. Now I'm gonna press four. This is the third performance scene in the multicam. So you probably have a good idea of why this is so convenient because now you can literally just press one through nine to sift through your performance scenes. So I'm gonna click play. So right here, if I wanna to switch to another performance scene, I'm gonna press two on my keyboard. And then let's say right here, I wanna to switch to another one. I'm gonna press three. Now I'm gonna go back to the first performance scene. Check this out. So you see what we're doing here, guys. This is just speeds up the editing process so much. And my personal editing workflow is I will go from beginning to end when the beat drops and the artist starts singing, I will literally just edit the performance scenes first by using this multicam method all the way to when they stop rapping or singing in the song. So it literally takes me pretty much five to 10 minutes to cut every single performance scene. So I pick apart all the best performance scenes using the multicam method. And then after that, I start adding my B-roll shots. After that, I start adding my effects. After that, I put my titles. And finally, I color grade, and then I give it a final look. So this just speeds up your editing process tenfold. And at the end of the day, you know, if you're editing 10 times faster by using this method, you're in turn making more money. Because at the end of the day, the less time that you spend in the editing suite, the more money you are actually technically getting paid for your music video shoot. If you spend 20 hours on a music video and you only charge $200 for it, <laughs> you're making less than minimum wage, right? So by figuring out ways to speed up your editing process, just really helps you be more productive. It will help you stay more motivated when you're editing. And at the end of the day, you're gonna make more money. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win.